Welcome to the Canon R7 Complete Camera Guide. My name is John Gringo and I have a very thorough class on a very interesting and very capable camera, the Canon R7. So in this class, I'm gonna be taking you through all the buttons, all the controls on this camera. We'll be talking about all the major features and we'll be doing a deep dive through the menu system. I'll show you all that it has to offer. I'll talk about different features that it has when you might wanna use it, not use it, and we'll do some kind of in-class demonstrations as well to show you exactly how things work for you on this camera. So I have this camera broken out to a very logical system here. Uh, we're going to be going through a lot of different sections, and so you can go back and review sections that are important to you uh, on particular topics. So we're going to start off with a little bit of introduction into the mirrorless camera that the R7 is. We'll go through some camera basics before diving into our first big section on the exposure. Here we'll talk about shutter speeds, apertures, and a lot more. The focus section definitely has a lot going on in there. Focus area, focus tracking. Now the drive and shutter mechanism has a lot of very interesting things going on in here. So we'll have a big section on that. We then take a tour of the camera, looking at all the buttons and dials and other features. We'll look at the viewfinder and monitor options. There's a lot of things that you can turn on and off in there. The quick menu is a shortcut menu to some features that you wanna have quick access with. And then we have a special section just on shooting movies. The camera acts very differently in that regard, so we'll look at that very closely. We then have a section on all the different camera connections, things that you can hook up to the camera. We'll look briefly at some of the available lenses, we'll give you a few recommendations in there. And then we dive into the menu. So the menu is broken up into multiple tabs and we're gonna go through each tab in a different section and fully cover what's going on in there. And then finally, when we're done learning all the bits and pieces, we'll talk about kind of how it all puts together and we'll go through my field setup guide, which is how I would set the camera up for different types of shooting scenarios. And so you get a better feel for which modes that you'll actually be using in there. And so that in a nutshell is what we're gonna be doing here in the R7 Complete Camera Guide. One thing to note is that with the full purchase of the class, you do get a printable PDF. Now this can be viewed electronically or you can print it out yourself. Now the main thing in here is that I have gone through and I have illustrated the entire menu system here. And I've listed everything in here. So if you're a visual person like myself, you can easily just kind of scan through and find the feature that you're looking for. I've also put recommendations on where I think a good starting point for most photographers is as for the settings. And this is uh, notably sometimes different than where Canon puts things uh, right out of the box. Now, I know everyone's gonna have their own setup for their camera, so I include this again later on without my recommendations in here so that you can have a blank spot to write down what you want or what your settings uh, preferred or are going to be in there. And so this comes once again with the full purchase of the full class. And so that can be handy for a lot of people in a lot of situations. All right, now in this class, as I go through and describe particular features, I will be talking about additional changes that you can make in the menu system. So I'm gonna give you this menu reference box that will allow those of you who like to skip forward and make adjustments very quickly. It'll let you know where to go and what to look for in order to make those adjustments. Now, later on in the class, when we get into the menu section, I'm gonna be referring back to earlier sections of the class where I fully described perhaps how a feature works in its entirety and we're just turning that particular feature on and off. And so you may need to go forward or back depending on what section you're in and how much information you're looking for. All right, so this class is on the Canon EOS R7 and this camera is the priority of this class. If you wanna take great photos, there's a lot of things you need to know about. One of them is definitely how to work your camera and that's what we're gonna address in here. Uh, Composition, lighting, exposure, focus, all of those are very important topics in photography. It's just that we don't have time to cover them in this very focused class on this particular camera. Now, my bent on teaching is I wanna teach you how to do things manually and how to get the highest quality images. There are a lot of different ways of using this camera to do things where the camera kind of 
finishes it off for you and creates a unique look or puts a filter on things. And I'm going to I'm going to show you those things and how they work and how to turn them on and so forth. But we're not going to dwell on those. I really want to teach you how to get things done yourself because there's very little that you can't do on this camera manually. You can really get in and fully control pretty much every aspect of photography manually on this particular camera. Now, I don't know how much you know about photography. I know that my guides are viewed by a lot of different people and a lot of different types of people with different skill levels. And so I tend to err on the side of explaining more just because there are a lot of newcomers into photography and I want to explain how it works and seeing how I'm teaching the class, that's the job of teaching people how things work. And so um, just be aware that I'm going to explain things. That's what I like to do. The instruction manual that comes with this particular class is very large indeed. And there's a lot of very important information in there. This class is not trying to replicate everything that is in that instruction manual. I'm trying to cover the most important information that most photographers are going to need most of the time. There still is a lot of good information in that instruction manual that you may want to go seek seeking out. There's detailed specifications, there's compatibility issues with different types of flashes and lenses, and there's a little bit deeper information on some topics I might go a little bit light on. I think most people could probably watch my class and never touch the instruction manual, but there are those who need a little bit more. Now there is also a online guide that you can go through if you want to have something to do it online as well. And the link is, is there on screen. We'll put it in the PDF so you can also get it there, but just be aware you can probably find that by searching for it uh, with Canon R7 instruction manual online. Now for anybody who is brand new to the Canon system, welcome. We've got a long history with Canon. I'm listing up here some of their notable moments in their history of when they uh, developed different styles of camera. One other thing I wanted to do with this list is look at all the different lens mounts and systems that they have had over the years. Canon, uh, you know, we think about their FD system and their EF system and now their R system and now they just kind of had three different systems over the years. No, they've actually had many different versions over the years. They have a long history and their cameras are very highly refined. Uh, the menu systems, the ergonomic controls are really considered the top of the line for most people who look at cameras uh, in the world today. It's, they've done a very good job at refining things and this camera is an amalgamation of a lot of previous cameras but it's also got a few new tricks up its sleeve and we'll talk about that as we get into the class. So let's take a look at the Canon system as it sits today. So they have a bunch of different categories. The main category that Canon is really pursuing right now is in full frame cameras that are in the mirrorless category. This is on the RF mount. Cameras like the R3, the R5, the R6 Mark II, for instance, are in this category. Now they have recently introduced the R7, which is the topic of our class, and the R10, very similar camera, which we'll talk about here in just a moment that also shares the RF mount, but uses a smaller size sensor. And so there's some compatibility and there are some differences as we will talk about in here. Now, uh, a very hard line firewall, and there is also another group of cameras and lenses that Canon makes, the M series, which is mirrorless on one hand, and it's also crop frame. So it's kind of like the R7, but it uses a completely different lens mount. It is the EF-M lens mount. And that was designed well before this R7, R10 series. It was kind of designed as a very small and compact mirrorless system with the emphasis on small and compact, relatively easy to use. And the R7 and R10 is designed to be used with lenses for the RF mount. So uh, it's a little confusing that they have these two systems that have some same parameters, but they are very different. And so uh, the M series is nice if you just want something small and light, pretty easy to use, limited lens collection. The uh, R7 is going to be very good to use if you want a much larger lens uh, series in, of lenses to use in there. Now, previously, the EF mount was their main focus in full frame DSLRs. They had a lot of very great cameras in here, a lot of professional cameras. They also made crop frame versions for the DSLR using the same EF mount. And so there was a very 
popular series of Rebel cameras and 90D, for instance, cameras in there that were very popular at a little bit lower price range because they had the smaller size sensor. Now you can swap some lenses back and forth and we'll be talking about that as we go forward in the class. Now currently with lenses, they do make a series of RF lenses for the RF mount. Now most of the lenses that they have at this time and as I foresee into the future, are going to be for the full frame camera. Now these can be used on the R7, the R10, and any of their crop frame R camera, but there are special RFS lenses that will work and are designed exclusively for the crop frame cameras like the R7 and R10. Uh, they're designed for the smaller image circle of that smaller size sensor. Now you can take an RFS lens, put it onto a full frame camera, and it works pretty well. You're not using the whole sensor, you're not going to get the full number of megapixels, but it works and it can be used, but it's not really what it's intended for. Uh, so there is some swappability back and forth, and there's nothing wrong with an R7 or R10 to take a full frame lens and use it on your camera. A lot of people do this to get a little bit more telephoto reach on there. Uh, it is kind of overkill because you're buying more lens. It's got more coverage over the sensor than you really need. But a lot of times Canon just isn't going to make a special RFS lens in all the different categories. They're just going to make a few of them. So there's always going to be more RF lenses than RFS as far as I can see. Now, as far as the EFM, they have their own lenses. And so if you are using the EFM cameras, they're going to have their own very separate lenses and there is very little interchanging. You cannot take an EFM lens and use it on an RF system at all, as far as I know, through any conventional adapter. I suppose somebody somewhere could make one, but uh, it's not, not really a thing. So be aware of that. All right. Now, I know in this class that there are going to be some people who use the R10 that are looking for information about how to use it. And while there are a number of differences be between the R10 and the R7, in the actual operation of the camera, they are very, very close. But there are some specifications that are different. And so I'm just going to run through the differences between the R7 and the R10. And if you have an R10, you can watch the rest of the class with these notes in mind. And pretty much everything else is going to be quite good. So first off, there's a little bit difference in the size and weight of the camera body. And so a little bit has to do with the battery that is being used. The R7 uses a battery that is more commonly used in the full frame cameras. And the R10 is going to be using batteries that are more common in those EFM cameras, so a little bit smaller size cameras. And so they have two different battery sizes, kind of for two different priorities, either weight and size or performance issues. Uh, we'll get two memory cards on the R7, just one on the R10, so a little bit more professional capabilities, you might say. The viewfinder is a little bit bigger and easier to see. We've got a headphone jack, which is nice if you're shooting video. The USB connection is a little bit faster, a little bit more modern. There is a multi-controller on the back of the camera. It's a joystick and wheel that allows you to make manual changes a little bit more easy. So if you are wanting to do manual photography and exposure, the R7 is going to be just a tad bit easier to work with in that regard. The R7 is built to a little bit better standards when it comes to the weather sealing. It's not a fantastically weather sealed camera, but it's better than the R10 and it's pretty good in its general sense of capabilities there. There is also a shutter that protects the lens, uh, the sensor area, I should say, when you're changing the lens. So the R7 is going to do better for those of you who change lenses more frequently, especially in not so great environments. Now, as far as the technology that's built into these two cameras, we have 32 megapixels versus 24 megapixels. So you get a tad bit more resolution with the R7. The R7 also has in-body stabilization. So it's going to be a little bit better shooting at slower shutter speeds with handheld work. However, the R10 has one little benefit here, and that it has a built-in flash. And uh, compensation for that is I think they had to compromise a little bit on the magnification of the viewfinder, so that's why you got a little bit uh, less of the magnification in the viewfinder, but you do get a built-in flash. There is an infrared remote that you can use with the R7. Uh, the rear screen is a little bit higher resolution, but the viewfinder is actually the same resolution between the two of them. Now, as far as the performance between the two of them, 
the battery life is largely dependent on the size of the battery that it uses. As I said before, the R7 uses a larger size battery, so you end up getting more life out of it. Now the electronic shutter can fire at 30 frames per second on the R7 and 23 with the R10. Now the actual real world use of using 30 frames per second is not very common and it doesn't work out very well on this camera for reasons I'll explain further into this class. Uh, so whether it's 23 or 30, not really a big difference. The important one is the mechanical. Those are both the same at 15 frames per second. Top shutter speed is a little bit different. Most average users aren't going to have a great need of 8,000 over 4,000, maybe some portrait photographers working in bright sunlight with really shallow depth of field lenses and a few other rare case scenarios as to where that's important. The raw burst mode, which is a very interesting feature we'll be looking at very closely in this class, has a crop mode when you use it with the R10. So it magnifies the telephoto, which could be good in some cases, but is generally not a great feature that it crops in for you like that. The flash synchronization is a little bit faster on the R7, can be handy when working with flash. The buffer um, or maximum burst rate on the camera is going to be more in the R7, so it's got more built-in memory. The autofocus on the R7 can work under a little bit lower light conditions, although you would probably be hard pressed to find the difference in real world between EV minus five and minus four. The 4K video is sampled from 7K as opposed to 6K. Once again, gonna be hard to tell in the real world, but slightly better on the R7. And the R10 has a bit of a crop mode when you are shooting at 4K in 60. So a number of performance differences there. Now, as far as the general features, when we get into the rest of the camera, we're gonna be talking about the features, how to turn them on, how to use them, when to use them and so forth. And there's not a lot of feature differences. Focus points, um, yeah, there's like 1500 points more in the R7, but that really isn't gonna make much of a difference when it comes in to focusing. It just allows you to be a tad bit more precise because you can have smaller focusing areas on the R7. We get a log profile. This is gonna be good for shooting video if you wanna color grade afterwards. So R7, a little bit better for professional video usage. Auto leveling, this is where the camera's built-in sensor can be used to level the camera for you. If you're on a boat or you're just having a hard time keeping the horizon level, uh, this is something that you can have turned on. It's not something I recommend for most uses, but in some cases where getting a level horizon correct is very important and you're not doing a good job on your own with it, it can be kind of handy. So it's it's kind of a nice feature for some things. Uh, so as you can see, there's not a lot of feature differences. There's performances and build issues. And so if you have an R10 camera, welcome to the class. Uh, feel free to hang out and uh, learn with us here because your camera is mostly the same when it comes to the actual operation of it. All right, the care and handling of this camera, well, there are many pages in the instruction manual. In short, the camera's not waterproof. Uh, I would stick with Canon batteries and power accessories. And very obviously they have written in there and I, I really thank them for writing this into the instruction manual. Don't drop the camera. If they didn't tell me about it, I would, I would just probably drop the camera. So don't drop it because it's not gonna be good on impact. All right, as far as the construction, it's a magnesium alloy body with high strength plastic. And so this is a pretty well-built camera. Now I think a lot of people who use this camera kind of have my same trend line with Canon in that I had a 7D and I had a 7D Mark II. And this camera is a better performing camera than either of those 7Ds, but it's not quite built like a 7D Mark II. Uh, this is a well-built camera, but the robustness of it just feels a little bit short. It feels more like a 90D, 80D, 70D series of cameras. And so technology-wise, very modern, very good. Uh, Construction-wise, weather sealing, it's just maybe a tad down from that particular level. They do classify this as dust and drip resistant. Uh, however, they cannot guarantee the exclusion of dust or water, etc from the camera, which means in the real world, on my camera, if it's raining outside, I would go out there either A, for only a short period of time to shoot, or B, I would use a rain cover if I had to shoot like a football game where I'm gonna be out there for two or three or four hours. 
and it's going to be under very wet conditions. Uh, be aware that the lens you have on there is also important to know that it has weather sealing as that is something that also varies between the different lenses from Canon. And finally, the shutter life. And so the mechanical shutter on this is rated to 200,000 firings as far as its typical or minimum lifespan. And 200,000, is that good or bad? Well, depends on what you're comparing it to. Back to the old days of film cameras, 50,000 was the standard, so it's fantastic. Uh, in comparison with some other cameras that are on the market now, they're at 500,000 on the shutter rating. So it's, you know, it fits its price range. You get what you pay for. What a surprise. Uh, so it's pretty good in that regard. Um, and it's something that, well, uh, I think is appropriate for the price range. Next up, preparing the camera. So let's make sure your camera and my camera is ready for today's class. First thing you want to do is charge and install the battery. That's going to take about two and a half hours. We're going to need a lens on the camera. You're going to want to have at least a memory card in the camera. I know you can take two. We'll talk more about that later on. We've got the on switch on the top. Make sure you go to the on position, not the video camera to start with, because we're going to be mostly talking about taking still photographs in here. Now this camera features a new little switch on the front of the camera. It's an autofocus manual focus switch. And so you want to make sure that that is in the correct position for being in autofocus. Uh, or if you have certain lenses that have a autofocus manual focus switch on them, that lens switch will override the body switch. It gets a little confusing in this regard. I don't know why Canon did this. I kind of do. Um, not totally happy with it, but I'll explain it more as we go through it. Now on the top of the camera is the mode dial. We'll talk more about this in section three, but for right now, I'm going to put it in the A plus mode, which is the fully automatic mode. And I'm going to press down on the shutter release just to make sure that my camera is working. Let's go ahead and make sure that my camera is indeed in the correct autofocus mode. There we are. And my camera's working. Hopefully yours is as well. If not, check that battery charge. Make sure you got a memory card in there or anything else that might be at issue. You want to have your camera working and ready for this class because I want you to be taking practice photos and playing with your camera as we go through the class. Now, firmware check. Firmware is the software that runs all the operations on the camera. And from time to time, Canon does firmware updates just like software on computers. Um, however, your camera is not connected to the internet directly, so you need to do a little bit more manual updating if you want to update it. Now, currently, this camera is on version 1.2.0. And it's quite likely at some point in the future, Canon's going to do another little bug update or fix or feature addition, and they're going to add on to that. Now, in order to check your camera, you're going to go into the menu setting and go into the setup menu to take a look at what version you have. Let me show you on my camera how you can do that yourself. All right, we're going to go into the menu. Now, navigating through the menu, you can use the uh, up, down, and left, right control, and you can move your way across from page to page, or you can use the dial on the top to do that as well, or you can do the info button to move a little bit more quickly. And so here on the last page, page six of the setup menu, you can see we are at version 1.2.0. You can hit the set button and you can go in and take a closer look. There's also lens firmware as well, but we're concentrating on the camera firmware right here. If uh, you have something less than 1.2 or you have uh, something newer available to you because you're watching this in the future, you can go to Canon's website. Uh, just do a little search for Canon R7 firmware and you'll usually find it pretty quickly and easily. You'll download that software, put it on a memory card, put the memory card in the camera, come to the spot that we just went to in the menu, and the camera will recognize that there is new firmware on the card. Now, in order to make this work as simply as possible, you want to make sure that your card doesn't have any other photos on it, any other information. It's best to reformat the card, download the firmware to it, and then load that card into the camera before doing a firmware update. Now, I'm going to be setting my camera up and working with it throughout this class as if it came straight out of the camera box, which is I know how some of you have had your camera, but I also know others of you 
have been playing around and changing settings. For those of you who would like to reset your camera back to the factory settings, you can do that in the setup menu by going to reset camera. Now, when you go in here, there's actually going to be two options. The first option is basic settings. And this is going to reset most of the basic exposure, focus, menu settings back to the default settings the camera comes with out of the factory. There is a whole section called other settings, and you can go in and specifically reset different areas that uh, compartmentalize changes that you might have made. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a basic reset because I haven't been playing around with all those other ones for a little bit. So let's go ahead and do this reset. So I'm going to dive into the menu. And in this particular case, I need to go to menu number six. Now I can't see it here because my camera is in the full auto mode. So I'm going to change to one of the more manual modes. I'm just going to go into the program mode. And now when I come to number six, we can see our reset camera option up here on the top. So you can just navigate left and right with the cross keys here in the back. We're going to press the set button to enter. I want to reset the basic settings on this camera. I'm going to select OK. And then I'm going to hit the set button. And it quickly reset. And my camera is now back at its factory default settings. Now, if you want to go in and change some of those other categories, feel free to do that at this time. Be aware that custom functions are a little bit different. They're set in a little bit more stone, you might say. You can go into custom function number five and you can clear out the custom functions of your camera. That's a whole section later on in this class. However, it does not clear button and dial customizing that has gone on. If you want to clear that, you go into custom function number three and clear customize settings. And that clears all your button and dial customizations. And that's something that we will also get into later on in this class. And so you can see there's a lot of different ways of getting your camera reset so it's ready for this entire class. All right, there you go, folks. That's just the intro, the tip of the iceberg for a camera that is going to have a lot of features. And I've got a lot to explain as we go forward. So we'll see you there.